Transportation is a major issue throughout the world, but in the developing world, the ability to move people and goods to markets can mean the difference between an economy that grows and one that continues in the trap of poverty. My entry for the 2015 Hackaday Prize is a solar-powered utility vehicle platform that can handle the harsh conditions in the world's least developed places and give the people there a tool to better their lives. This project has been developed and built in South Sudan, which has some of the worst road infrastructure in the world. The design is based as much as possible around what can be sourced locally. I based many of the components around inexpensive motorcycle parts, which are readily available here. There's also no specialty equipment needed to build it. The only power tools I used were an angle grinder, a drill, and a welder, all of which can be found in local welding shops. My goal is to create a detailed set of construction plans that are very simple to understand and can be printed out and used by these local shops to fabricate the vehicle locally. If I were to move forward with this project, I would like to create kits which contained all the electronics and difficult to source parts. Then local people could do all the assembly. I am now in the Mark II version of the light electric utility vehicle, which I am now calling the Solar Utility Vehicle, or SUV for short. It is now drivable, though there are a number of features I still want to add. The basic design of the vehicle is two halves that articulate at the center point and can also twist at this point. My new design uses sealed bearings to transfer the load directly to the frame. This has created a very strong connection that allows for easy turning. The body is made of tube steel skinned in one millimeter sheet steel. This creates a light yet strong frame that can easily be repaired or modified. Power for the vehicle comes from four 95 watt solar panels that form a canopy over the vehicle. These go to a 40 amp charge controller which charges two tubular gel batteries. The vehicle is moved by four separate permanent magnet DC gear motors, one connected to each wheel by a chain drive. Power to the motors is delivered by two Sabertooth 2x60 motor controllers. Steering is done by differential motor control. The control for the system is handled by two Arduino Pro Minis. The first Arduino controls the Sabertooth motor controller via serial. The Arduino directly reads the value from the joystick and buttons on a clone Wii nunchuck. The other Arduino monitors current via an Allegro Microsystems 200 amp Hall Effect current sensor. Temperature is monitored individually for all motors and batteries via DS18B20 temperature probes. All of this information, plus the information from the charge controller and settings, are available on a 20x4 LCD screen. Unfortunately, the LCD screen died, so a demonstration won't be possible until someone brings me a replacement in a few weeks. Sourcing components has been one of the biggest challenges working here in South Sudan. It requires careful planning and very long lead times. When equipment fails, it can take a long time to get spares. The day before shooting this video, I lost one of the Sabertooth motor controllers due to a burned regulator. This means that the video footage only shows the vehicle with two of the four motors powering the wheels, so I wasn't able to show its true capability. One of the things I love about this vehicle is that because it's a mobile power bank, it can be modified for a lot of different tasks out here, including things like running a small vaccine fridge for a mobile medical clinic. There are also a lot of business opportunities in areas like much of South Sudan which lack power. For my own purposes, I wanted a mobile workshop, so I added an onboard welder, which can be seen here. Welding with batteries is different, but with a large arc stabilizer, good results can be achieved, as you can see here. I've also modified an old Makita battery to act as a plug, so I can run all my Makita tools directly off the battery. I also have a variable power supply, which I can power my soldering iron for electrical work. The biggest thing I'm working on at the moment is a PID control loop, which will adjust the motor power to keep the vehicle tracking correctly, based on an angular position sensor at the point of articulation. I'm also building a dump bed for the back, and accessories like lights and a horn. Then I will be starting the process of creating plans. I really believe this vehicle has the potential to show the viability of solar powered transportation, and could be an amazing tool for the developing world. I would like to thank Hackaday for hosting this competition, and helping me to stay motivated for this project.